And what do you got? What's in the works here? No, can't, can't. Oh, God. It feels good. From Erie's own government access, Channel 9, from the City Hall Council Chambers, it's time once again for the Taxpayers Hotline Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host... Wow, look at that. They put the wide-angle lens on today. We got the big guys in here today. You're in the middle. What happened to you? I don't know. I just, I guess, a pickle in the middle, I guess. A thorn between two roses. There you go. Or it could be that, you know what they say about, what do they say about uh, absolute authority corrupts absolutely? And he's in the middle. I'm always in the middle. He's like he wants to be the chairman, you know what I'm <laughs> I'm the chairman the of this. Capo. The, the chairman the of capo this. capo di capo. Anyway, this is Kaz Kwiatkowski, city councilman. John Steiner. And Carl Anderson, Erie County Council, 4th District. This is a full house. This is a full It'd house. take a royal flush to beat this one. <laughs> the phone was already ringing. But, is it uh, really? Yeah. But then whenever and we're on answer, time today. You know, well, yeah, kind of. I mean, really good today. It's a beautiful day now, today. Now, who says a county and a city can't get along? You know, this is the most the county council's been on this show ever. I think so. Uh, I mean, uh, that's the way it should be. City council, we can't get council. yelled. We can't get yelled at for that, can we? Working together, it's a it's a new concept. I mean, ever since you know the new mayor came in, we got a new council person coming in. Were you the only new council person? No, Scott Rastetter. Oh, Scott Rastetter. Yeah, he's from Waterford, though. Or is that what? Where's he from? L- lives in uh, represents Waterford, but li- lives in uh, Edinburgh. Oh, so he's down down from that area. Born, born and raised in Erie, uh, has a business down in Edinburgh now. Oh, does he? Well, you know, it's good that. Uh, what a great week! And you know, I was watching him cap off the Erie Insurance Building. Oh, really? Great week! Oh, yeah, fantastic. You know, the Erie Insurance has done a lot of really good things down in this community. Well, there's a lot of nice things coming yet. You well, know, there's a lot of nice things coming, and we just have to all work together to. The one thing people don't understand is, you know, they keep going about other towns and all that. We got to stop fighting each other here. Yeah, that's our biggest problem. You know, we we got to realize that uh, we're kind of at the end of the barrel. You know, we got to. Well, you, you know, we had that that EMTA drama, and well, wasn't there some other drama too that was going on or something between the city and the county, but. Let's There's see. a lot of lack of communication. Well, you know, with, you know, we have the new land land bank thing coming up and all kinds of good things. You want me to do it? You want me to? I'll work it. I don't, I don't matter to me. Go ahead, caller. Hey, good morning, John. How are you today? Good afternoon. I mean, I've been Carl here. Good to hear you on today. Thank you. Um, so you okay. can ask county questions today, too, now, so. <laughs> I have a question that maybe pertains to both the county and the city and just because it's been kind of a burden laid on my shoulders a little bit to help out. You said you're familiar with the STEM program in schools, science, technology, engineering, math. Yeah. They're good. We have a pretty good program in the city. It's been going on for, what, about 80 years? But all of a sudden, it's starting to lose its source of funding, I guess, by many of the sponsors, you know, the, some of the bigger companies like Erie Insurance used to sponsor us. They don't sponsor it as much anymore. And so we really, the kids that can participate in it are losing the ability to go to the competitions. There's no money for, not enough money, so they say, to help transport them. If you'd be kind enough to, I don't know if you can put the word out uh, and you know, let me know because I have, I'll, I don't want to be the liaison man, but I'll put whoever wants to help sponsor in touch with the person they need to talk to. And then uh, maybe we can try to keep the STEM program going. We have, I guess, about 200 uh, students out of the Erie School District itself. I don't know if that means also Mill Creek. I'm assuming it does. Uh, that will need help being sponsored, and it runs at least $300 a student. So that's you know, a fair chunk of money that has to come in. You mean they're not doing it up at uh, Central no more? Or, well, Erie High School. <clears throat>
win at a competition because that's actually a lot of them, you know, like uh, he was indicating that some of the students, uh, his wife is also a school teacher in the city. Some of her students that are involved in it end up going to LECOM and become doctors in the area here. So it's uh, not like we lose the you know, brain drain that way. But maybe if uh, we can get more organizations, you know, like a lot of them like GE or all that more cutting back on how much they're sponsoring anymore. I was just going to so say we, that. We need to try to, I don't know if you can be of some ears and contacts or let me know if you can find any more helpful sponsors. And if you want, I can tell you offline who, who it is I'm dealing with and working with, but you can... Uh, Maybe help out there if that's the case. All right. Sure. I appreciate it. I think the county, the county and the city, because actually this fellow that oversees 13 of the counties in this area. There's six thousand. He told me there's like six thousand students throughout the whole state of Pennsylvania that gets involved in this program, competition-wise. Wasn't that the program that was started when Jim Barker was here when the GE? Correct, yeah. Kicked up uh, all that money? John Rice gave uh, the $11 million. I, I was going to say, I think they're they're coming pretty close to the end of that funding. The, and G's not really a funding. And probably G's not a player anymore around here. Well, but. I mean, there's no executive yeah. offices anymore. So. I'm going to sign off so you guys can talk on here and I, I can hear you then. All right, all right thanks. Take care. God bless you guys. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's the problem with... Yeah, I, yeah, I remember when uh, GE made that deal with Jim Barker. And that, that was, was that the STEM program? That, I mean, that was yeah. the science, right. right? Well, they gave a lot of money to East High School too. I mean, it was yeah. They, there was a lot of money that G put into the Erie school system, and you're probably right now. That was when I was on there, and that was a few. That's probably dried up now. Right. Well, like, you know, that that foundation money, ironically enough, is uh, funded in a uh, small town, uh, or it's housed in a foundation in a small town in upstate New York. Uh, in Essex, New York, and I, I actually uh, was doing some work there and, and ended up meeting the, the folks that run the foundation uh, that has GE's money that was coming back to Erie. Um, but that, that's been going on for a number of years, and I think we're, we're coming to the end of the, uh, you know, the money, the funding, the $11 million that was initially given. I, I, I don't know what happens after here now. Well, the big thing is to keep funding to keep fighting for the funding of that program uh keep it in the forefront of how it's benefited the the citizens and the students in particular in the community yeah when barker was there i mean we had that presence there it was yeah. and and i think he, the, the caller made a great point in saying that uh with all the talk about brain drain in our community many of these kids are the ones who stay here uh, right and and they're not part of the brain drain. Hold on a second, Colin. They're they're the people who are, uh, you know, retaining the, the the young people in our community. Right. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. Hello. Talking about brain drain, it was like you probably heard about the smart city. That funding we're doing in the, that could lead to some. Well, there's some exciting things happening. Yeah, if you know, if it, go ahead, caller. You scared your last caller off. <laughs> no, he, he hung up on us. Yeah, I got three quick questions. Oh, that's all. Well, I could probably go for the whole hour, but then Doc would call up and tell me I'm hogging the airways. <laughs> First question is: since Pembriar is closing their tennis courts, yeah, I just saw that. I have to check, John. You saw my. Posting or? No, no, I saw it on the news and it happened, what was strange was it happened right after we awarded the contract. Now, I sent that to you in your, apparently you haven't looked at your phone. Well, I've, I've got, my phone is backed up so far with messages. But well, you're supposed to take care of that. Yeah, no, I'm trying, it just takes, it, okay. we're, we're reading the agenda, of trying to do that for this week. In but, other words, it, that money will probably go back into the general funds, I well, believe. Well, we gave, Here's what we don't know yet, and I, I, I meant to go upstairs, and I'm, I, this is the first I've had a chance to come downtown since I saw it on the news. I'll go up and ask Public Works. What, what I think is going to happen is we awarded that contract, like I said to, that, to you, John, earlier, uh, people were concerned about what it was, and I said, that's our summer rec program. So they bring in students to teach, uh, and I did a little checking on it, and where we do this was like Frontier, uh, Burton Park, 
and they they bring in some kids to teach tennis to uh, youth, and we, they use our courts. We don't go out there. Uh, it sounds like everybody was taken by shock. If you listen to the news, well, if you look at the old ladies that uh, play tennis, they're still in shock. Well, not, but then you have a lot of schools that have been rented out that court time, and it sounds like they're eliminating the whole program. That's what it looks like to me. The program, and they're going to make soccer courts. Yeah. So if they do that, uh, I would. What I think would happen was the con- yeah the con- the money will come back, but we're going to have to find uh, lead somebody else. I know they're losing all their instructors too because they're in shock. Well, well, then that tells you that if they're doing that. Uh, our program shot, so either we uh, don't have the program this year, or we, I don't know if there was a second bidder, and I have to check. Well, the, what, isn't there that, that, what's that tennis, remember that tennis place that's out in Mill Creek? What, what, what is that, what was that again? Uh, Westridge. West. Okay, question number two. Yeah. <clears throat> the street repairs. Who decides on what streets to be repaired? That's, I know we took out a bond, refinanced the bond. Yeah, we, well, that put the taxpayers in hook for another. Well, we're working on old money right now. Okay, we we haven't we haven't authorized any new money. Well, you know, I think what we should do, or you should bring it up to yeah. the mayor. I think we should have a listing of streets. They should come down to city council, let the streets director say why. They picked that particular areas. Well, the way it went in the past, I don't know how Schember's going to do it. In the, in the past, it was the uh, the city engineer, I believe, the streets department chief, public works director, and the mayor. And they, they all made a call, and they tried to. If you look at the list, they tried to kind of divide it up equally. Well, I looked at the list, and it doesn't look the streets that they're doing. There's hardly any traffic on those streets. Yeah, well, you know, there's reasons for everything, but I agree with you. Uh, we have not got the list yet. I saw the list. The, the current one. Yeah, it's on your, it's on your uh, email, yeah. on your agenda. Well, usually it comes down a little better in shape than what it did. Well, look at, look at your agenda but and we, you'll see it all. But we will be having to allocate funds for next year and probably for the rest of may, maybe maybe some more this year yet. and That hasn't come down yet. Another question. Yeah. The mayor have to bring his part-time solicitor with him to all these city council meetings when we have solicitors sitting upstairs? That was the deal that he uh, he agreed he would be at the meetings, and when he can't, uh, he does have one of the other ones there. So far, John, i got to tell you, we had two... The last couple ones I've seen, he's with the assistants, well, our assistants. But but his his bill for the last two months so far has been under what they thought it would be. So, you know, we're keeping track of that council, but he's submitted his January, February, uh, we'll probably get the March bill pretty soon, and so far we're okay. And I see you're retaining the same towing companies again, or it's up on the agenda for approval. Yeah, well they go out for bid and, you know, they... And nobody bids. Either they bid or they don't bid, uh, I, I'm not involved in it when I was controller, the controller actually sits in on him if, if he or she wants to. And I used to sit in on there. You'd be surprised. People always tell me, oh, how come we don't go local or how come we don't do this? A lot of times you get up there and you find out nobody bid well, for whatever have, reason, you know. Have, uh, Eddie's collectible. Right. McMillan. Right. It, that seems to be – they like to have two on hand. And, uh, you know, in the past we used to get uh, – there was another outfit. I don't want to say it over the air, but – right. I don't know if I don't know if they bid this time. I really don't. Asbury Street. <laughs> it, it should be on the agenda. I haven't looked at it, but no. sometimes on the agenda they'll put the other bids below it, and you can see the ones that were rejected. True. But a lot of times, uh, it's like when we tore down McBride Viaduct, and we heard, "Well, how come you?" It went out. Nobody bid on it. Nobody wanted it, and so you know. I'll leave you with one thing. Go ahead. What's that? I think we ought to have a public mirror hearing, don't you? Have a great day. Jeez. <laughs> Bye-bye. Uh, the towing contract. Yeah. I mean, have they been fruitful for us or how? Yeah, how? they've been. Uh, they, uh, in the past, we had a lot of complaints. Uh, there were a lot of charges, a lot of complaints. It seems like it's calmed down. The revenue is coming in. Uh if it doesn't, the controller will keep us aware of it, and she'll jump on them. But it seems like it's a, it's a better system. It seems to be working. 
Okay. I haven't. I don't get the complaints I used to, you know, by phone. Well, that's a good thing. I mean, usually if if they if they don't solve it here, then the councilman get the phone call. Right. But it seems to be working out a lot better than it used to. So I mean, the city is getting our fair share of. You know. Well, we set the fines, and you know. Yeah. The biggest trouble we had in the past was we we there were issues of uh, safety, uh, personal safety with vehicles. Uh, people had questions, you know, and that we don't need that. Right. You know, bad enough your car gets towed, but right. You, you want to make sure your car gets towed. You know where to get it. Right. Well, and sometimes there's questions of timing, like people want to get their car out in the middle of the night, and that doesn't work all the time because they're not open. But right. Wait, have you heard any complaints? Or? Oh, I haven't. Oh. I haven't heard anything. I just yeah. The bidding pro. A lot of people think you know, like the bidding process. We we can't make a rule that it has to be local. We can encourage it, mm-hmm. but a lot of times you, local merchants don't bid. It's like on cars. I I knew people in the car business who said they they couldn't sell the cars for what we're buying them for with the state contract. You, you just can't even touch it. Well, see, people don't understand that it's the lowest responsible bidder. Yeah, and we do go over, we look over it, you know, it's a, if they, if, after, after we get the bids, they do, they do not award them, okay? They're given back to the engineer or the department head, and like in the case of materials for paving and stuff, they look at it, is that what we wanted, or is that what we're getting? You know, if it's not, then they can either go to the second bid or rebid it. But they do, they do look them over, now, you know, you have to, you have to hope they'd look them over in the right way, but they are reviewed. Right. Well, I know they do do the bidding. I know that they take the bidding process very serious because I remember something went down, uh, it was a couple of years ago with the animal shelter. Well, I, I, I hate to bring that up, but I, I bring it up to people. I said, look, I like both, I, I like both shelters. They yeah. both do great work. You know, yeah. they do. And, it was just a thing that uh, if we're gonna if we're gonna play by rules, you know, you have to make it fair. I mean, if if everybody plays by the rules, you can't change them because it didn't turn out the way you wanted to. You know. Well, plus if you uh, let's say if you don't follow the bidding process, the city opens itself up to lawsuits. And we had councilmen one day. I said, you can't can't do that. I mean, now, now you put doubt in the public's minds that yeah, then, then we play games. You right. know, and we shouldn't be playing games. It's right. You know, when I when I was in the bidding process on the other side of the fence, right. there were times when I thought it was I'd look at it and go, "Wait a minute, you know, you beat me by one buck? Come on, right? You know, and you start to wonder. You, you that's one you wanted to be a. And when I used to go to the bid process, unless somebody opened up the envelopes and resealed them, they were they were open right there. You know, I got to look at them; didn't look like they were resealed. Yeah, but then they offered to do it for free. Right, and then so. What do you mean? The, for the animal shelter. Well, that was one they threw out there, yeah, but. Free, it's hard to beat free. I mean, and, and if, you know. Well, the animal shelter does a fantastic job. And There's they, no question they, about they've, it, no. They've even, they, they've expanded uh, into all of your economy. I think we're blessed near you. we got two shelters that really care. I mean, I would rather have the animal shelter have the money. You know, we've had Ruth on the show. So, I can't remember why it was, though. We couldn't. I, I'm trying to remember now. It was Humane Society. or There was something with the bids or something. And then uh, they, then it was rewarded, awarded to the well, Humane it, Society. I mean, I think at first what happened was, if I remember right now, now you jog my memory. The bids came in. Okay. One was lower. And the other one wanted to give change and go to free. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, but you can't do that because that wasn't the original. If I remember, I'd have to go back and look, but... If what you say, it would have been a no-brainer, but I don't think it was. I think it was one came in this way, one came in that way. Mm-hmm. The other one was lower, so it was awarded. Then the other, the, the one that didn't get it was well, going to give it, it It's free. not that I don't, but with the Humane Society being in Mill Creek. But you know what? That's our fault, okay? That's our fault. We, they were warned, even when I was controller, we used to warn them about you know, when you write your specs, okay, write the specs. If that, if you want to put in it like a, a time limit, how long it takes to get to the place, you want to put geographical restrictions, 
You can do that, but it has to be in the. You can't change that stuff after. Yeah. Well, when you Ru- know. when Ruth was here, when something goes wrong in the county or uh, the state police, they call the Anna Shelter. Not, I don't think they call the Humane Society. Am I right about that? I mean, well, I don't know what the state. They say the state is not obligated to our contract. Our contract's only with our people. When our people pick up I don't an animal, I think they have a contract because she was here talking about it. What they don't have a contract with the state. I don't think they don't. I don't think so. And she probably does it on her own. You know, yeah. they, I, and this is the things that look. What I would tell, you know, upstairs, and I and they, they've been told this. You know, write the specs the way you want it. Okay? You can write the specs any way you want, as long as everybody understands that when they bid. You can't. As long as it's a fair process. Yeah. I mean, if you, I mean, there's nothing wrong with us saying, you know, because of urgency, okay, we want you to be within five minutes or, okay? But when you don't do that and then you you change things, that's when the public gets. Right. Go ahead, caller. About the Humane Society and about the free, but uh, you, know, you wonder how they make up the difference. I think they make up the difference in how much they charge you to uh, be able to get an animal from their shelter. Some of them are lower priced than the others. But uh, here's one thing I forgot to ask you guys uh, both the county and the city used to have a map of the uh, city on one side, county on the other side. Uh, and I thought they used to put one out every time there was like a major change of a uh, mayor, you know, because you put on the other one side the uh, leadership of the community, county and city, uh, listed there with phone numbers for contacting. Are they still doing that anymore? I know people say GPS system, but not everybody has a GPS system or uses one. So I was wondering, is the, the county and city still putting out maps like that? Yeah, that's a good question. We'll, we'll have to find out for sure, but I... I know that the map room uh, at the county courthouse uh, has done the, done something in recent years. I, I don't know if it's done they used to have every maps year, there. but yeah, used to be able to go over and purchase maps sometimes, or so, some were complementary. But they yeah, used to have some uh, different corporations or companies that sponsor part of the maps. Um, I know what was the erection wall that was down there. I don't think they're there anymore, but they used to help print them up or something. You know, if the state did it like Ohio does. When you go to Ohio at the rest stops, you can get a map of any major city in Ohio. You know, like Cincinnati, Cleveland, Akron, all that. And, you know, usually the county maps, that's usually done on a local basis, but, yeah, the state could get involved with that too a little bit. But, yeah, Carl, you could probably, I think the county does more of the maps than we do. Yeah. We'll have to that's check what I thought, and particularly since there's so many new developments on Creek, you know, that, uh, well, I used to go out there all the time. Once, uh, I used to go out there every couple of years at the county and just buy a county map. Because, uh-huh. you know, in the old days, you could find one. Uh, some of the radio stations were doing it or the bus company. But they weren't always, like, really detailed. They might have the main routes on there. But, yeah, the county one, they always had a nice map of the county that was pretty close to being relevant, you know. Yeah, well, some of my, my GPS, uh, the old one, didn't even show the Bayfront Highway. Yeah. Hey. See, that's another thing. Can that help a per, uh, person put in perspective what's uh, going on in the city sometimes, too? What, you know, like you'd say the Bayfront Highway. So, but I, I thought about that. Somebody asked me if the city had a bit of all there from New York. They asked me, is there a map for the city or county there? I said, well, you know what they used to. I don't know if they still do. So. I right, we'll to throw that out there in case it's uh, something that has been overlooked. Or so, all right, thanks. Okay. Yeah, they used to give out complimentary maps different places. Well, I saw that he mentions the Bayfront Highway. That yeah. uh, it's possible they might uh, pull the funding for the uh, you know how they're going to move the Bayfront Highway under. They're going to what? Pull it? Pull or make changes to it? Really? I, I thought that to... was in the newspaper or we'll something. Talk... Like I don't read the paper though. Go ahead, caller. I got a question for Carl. Oh, that's, that's what we brought him here for. Well, he probably won't give me the right answer. But oh, no. <laughs> no, no, Carl's a good guy. Let me, I, I, I'll go to bat for him. Well, with this $5 registration fee for cars in the county, how long before you get enough match or money that the state will match, and where 
and how are you going to determine what bridges have to be repaired, seeing it's for bridge repair and not road repair? Right, that's a good question. Uh, by us entering the program, the county then becomes eligible for the state matching money. And uh, so uh, after a year uh, being in the program, we receive that funding and, and we have our pot of money. You mean after you get a million dollars, then you can apply for funding from the state? No, no, no. We when, Once we've entered the program, uh, then we become eligible to be a part of the state program. As long as you have a million dollars, then they'll, ref they'll give you a million dollars, but you have to have the million up front first, don't you? No, it's not a specific um, limit as to, to how much money we have. I thought, from what I understood from somebody downstate, you have to have a million dollars in your coffers before you can apply to get that million dollars for the, from the state. Well, that'd be bad then for counties that don't have a lot of urban area. Right. Well, you, you have to be in the pro. You have to pass. Well, all the various counties aren't doing this. Right. Some some county. I think there's 23 or 24 counties That's now that what, have entered the program. Seven counties in, in Pennsylvania. 67. Correct. Yeah. Well, how much do you think we'll get a year? Uh, they're estimating, I think, 255,000 was the amount. Okay. So some, somewhere close. That might not be the exact what, number. What about the people that buy a two-year registration and had it? They're exempt from this next year's collection? No, oh no, they'll, they'll still get hit with the, that fee right. for each year. They got year. it for two years. Like, if, if your registration was due this month, and you decide to take a two-year registration, which you can, then you are exempt from this year and next year because they won't put it in. The, the, the Transportation Department puts this in as an additive to your registration fee. Then they put the $5 fee for Erie County. Is that not correct? Right, but I, I'm pretty sure if they do a two-year registration, you get both years. You get hit both years at once. So it would be a ten dollar. It would be ten dollars instead of five. But we, we can, we'll his, double check that. But. Getting back to his question, though, we can still apply for the. Well, you know, one, once we passed the the resolution was passed. Right. You become eligible for the funds, and unless so, you're you're a part of the program. So if you have two hundred fifty thousand, you get you can get five hundred or whatever. Right now, the state. I mean, obviously, there's a. A numbers situation that there there has to be enough money to be able to do I, I, work. I understand you have to have a million dollars before you can apply to the state for matching funds. Hmm. Look well, at that. Well, you, look, have, you have to be a part of the program first to become eligible. Yeah, that'd be kind of rough, John, because even uh, like Erie now. We're, we're, okay, if we get two fifty, I'm betting Allentown probably gets. You know, there's a couple counties involved there. They may, they only get 500,000. That's almost like they're exempt. Well, we don't know if Allentown is into this program. No, that's what I'm saying. If they put a million dollar ceiling, that pretty much, I mean, you're looking at Allegheny County or Philadelphia County for sure. And, you know, if you have multiple counties like Allentown, which is Lehigh and Northampton, you know. I don't understand. You'd, you'd be kind of restricting people, I think, right? Why would it's they, a tough to get a million. Yeah, why would they have a program where you have to charge? You're gonna they'll match the money, mm -hmm. but you have to charge extra money. So if the money's there to begin with, why do you have to have the mat? Why do you have to well the, the money, raise it they, to match they, it? They want the local communities to buy into the program. Well, so, we do buy into the program by buying the registrations in the first place, don't we? I mean, that, that's how the money gets into that program in the first so you place. Get the money, right? Yeah, but you got to agree to do it. So what they're saying is if you, if I agree, am I, am I saying this right, Carl? If I agree as a driver and I tell my co my councilman I'm in favor of this, okay, so I'm willing to pay five bucks. Now, they can't charge you five bucks unless they sign on. And if there's public pressure, they probably not going to do this. So if we raise 250000 a year. Yeah, okay, if we do that by, by say, willing to pay. Right, so they're going to give us, you know, if we right, raise this, this is an extra program to do preventative work on bridges. To it's, it's to in, it's to encourage now. local communities to get involved in repairing bridges before it's too late. So, yeah, so, yeah, bridges. So it's a proactive, and that would be a good example 
what should have been done years ago with with the McBride bike. Right, no, absolutely. The registration and everything, right? Right. Yeah, before they get bad and they have to be rebuilt. Before they get to the point of no return. And God knows we got a lot of bridges like that. We only so. have 249 in well, Erie County. Yeah, but you know, a lot of them, like, you know, people got mad at the one by the zoo on Norman Way, but. True. But that's, a, you know, even that little piece is a very. The imp- vital link, right? There. Yeah, and you know, you take the zoo bridge, which they decided not to rebuild. Uh, and then I, this was pointed out to me, John. Nobody knows this one. From the uh, public dock to State Street is technically a bridge. Right. Nobody knew that. If you ask the average person here, they think it's a road. Right. But it's actually a bridge. So it was a bridge. So if you don't fix that like we did a few years ago, you're looking at a major problem. I used to fish under the bridge. Yeah. John did too. <laughs> but people didn't think that's a bridge. They think that's just an elevated roadway. Right. Uh, but under Pennsylvania law, it's a bridge, you know. That's true, so. But, you know, I mean, I don't, Carl's a good, you know, he'll get, I'm, I'm sure he'll find out, but I, I would think, John, if they did a million dollars, that, that puts a lot of counties out. Well, all, a lot of the counties aren't in it. Well, that's true, but if we're in, and if we only get 250000 it would take us four years to get to a million. That means we can't technically spend anything. Uh, other counties don't have 249 bridges like we do. Yeah. So... I, I think I even heard the county exec talking about this on uh, talk radio there the other day. So we have more bridges than a lot of places. Yeah, well, true. we got 240 All those little bridges cricks. and how many are yeah, shot. Yeah, but talking about the bridges, I still think we should have a public hearing. Have, have a good morning, <laughs> afternoon. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I mean... But then he asked who's going to make the determination. Well, you have to appoint a panel of engineers, really. Right. I mean, people that, you know, structural engineers that go out there and say, you know, what else would you do? Go ahead, Carl. Go ahead. Yeah, we just paid the registration fee for one of our cars. Uh, two year, and with a $5 charge on it, did it on a line. $5 charge. Now, next year, maybe we'll get a little for uh, another 5 bucks. But they did charge at least five bucks, right? Five dollars for a two-year. Hmm. Hmm. Well, then by doing the two-year registration, you're going to get a essentially get a year free. Yeah, unless they, like he said, unless they come back well, next unless year. Unless they come back and change it. Buy one, get one free. Yeah. Can't beat that. Hey, thanks for calling. Thanks. Maybe, maybe next year it'll be ten bucks too. You know? Yeah, you yeah, never right. know. Let's <laughs> get their foot in the door. Another thing I wanted to make a comment about is the streets. Yes. So from Liberty to probably past Cranberry on Eighth Street. It is a mess. I mean, and another comment I have, last year the last street they paved was between Myrtle and Sassafras on 6th Street. There was nothing wrong with that street, except for Gannon is in that whole area. And even on 5th Street, all along the uh, Erie Insurance's building, nice and paved. Now, I have like eight buses go by here in the morning since Strong Vincent out here has changed their school. And then eight more buses go back after school and it shakes the whole house these buses are loaded people come off that bayfront highway and you know big semis come over h street you take a ride from liberty to cranberry and see you lose your muffler but i pay taxes mm-hmm. and don't and they get a nice street paved though there was nothing wrong with that street and they I, didn't have i've heard the same complaints about up by wicu are oh, even removed bad. over there by their dormitories. That's why I don't go downtown. If I got to pay downtown to park a, a meter, why does Gannon get free parking over there? Where do they get free parking? Uh, by their dormitories on Six and South Street. I took it right by them. There's uh, like uh, four meters are missing there. They took the meters off. The poles are still there. Ooh, you know I'm on that committee. Where? Give me that address. On Six and South Street. Again. On Sassafras, the gamut of the dormitory is there. And they, they took the meters down? There's four, there's uh, two, uh, there's two, uh, yeah, there's like four meters missing from the corner up to the door. On 6th Street? Yeah. Okay. And like I said, that street is all nice and paved. There was nothing wrong with that darn street well, last year. The one thing we did do when, when they were supposed to build the dorms. I know it's not a perfect world. Yeah. But it seems like people get preferential treatment. And it because I do pay taxes. Well, the one thing they said about the dorms when they built them, 
uh, and council didn't follow through at that time. It goes back a few years. Uh, they were supposed to have adequate off-street parking to address the issue of, okay, if you're going to put dorms in there, uh, you know, street parking is really for people doing business. It's not intended to be for, like, the homeowner is not supposed to have to pay to park in front of his house. That's not the intent. There it's, is parking in back of that building. But, yeah, they, they were, but they're supposed You're to have a lot. talking about the Harborview House apartment building. They're supposed to have a lot more parking, and, and that one was probably grandfathered. But the new dorms they built, they didn't put adequate parking in there. When and, you take a look from uh, Sassafras Street west, probably 50, 60 feet, there's no parking. And there's, like I said, they did take some of the meters off of the poles. The poles are still there. But they have all that whole space there, no parking. And <laughs> there's, there's probably room for uh, 10 meters there. Why would, I, I'm curious why, that was before I was on, why did they take them down? Well, I mean, come on, you know yeah. why. That's a, good, that's a good question to ask somebody who's on the committee. Preferential treatment, period. I mean, if they can't park there, what do they? You said you were on the committee, Cass. No, before, but I mean now, not before. When, when, they, when, they, when they bought that uh, Harborview, that was before I was on council. Why would they have taken, I mean, if they no parking there, why would they have done that? Is somebody parking there? Or? Well, there's cars there parked all, a lot of times. You go by there and there's cars parked there maybe going, picking people up or dropping people off. And they're not getting tagged and probably putting their flashers on a long time. No, there's pizza delivery men there parked right there, you know, for deliveries and stuff like that. Yeah, I got to go take a walk, see how it's posted, and then talk. I am on authority now, last, you know, but a lot of that stuff was... uh when they bought Harborview, that, that goes back a few years. And then they were building dorms, too, and they did not. I remember uh, I, I bugged this one colleague of mine. I said, you guys let them get away with murder. They are supposed to have, like, so many parking spots. They didn't. They relaxed it. So then what happens is, you know. Well, you know okay. Since, I'm having a nice day, guys. That's okay. Sense. Thanks. Thank you. Since you have a pen in your hand, and I'm I'm here. Yes, Maybe I should, uh, for the my fellow neighbors on Parade Boulevard, put in a complaint about the street what, what, conditions. Uh, what you mean about the whole street? Thirty eighth up to Grand View. Bad, right? Hey, it's uh, it's pretty bad. Thirty eighth from let's see, oh wait, thirty uh, eighth uh, Parade uh, Boulevard. Yeah, to Grand View. Thirty eighth to Grand View. Yeah, I, you know, the, the, I, the this guys usually get up there and do a pretty good job repairing it, but uh this mayor is pretty quiet, so I don't know what his committee's like. In the past, it was uh they had the engineer go out, they had the public works guy, the uh, streets, and they made a consensus, you know, we and got, they took some complaints from citizens, but okay. to, to say it wasn't at the end of the day, uh, there weren't certain things being done probably politically would be, you know. Yeah. I mean, you can see it. They tried to do it geographically to, uh, instead of looking at which roads really needed it, maybe, you know, they tried to ease it east and west and. Right. Long term, though, I've said this and nobody wants to hear it. I'm not in favor of bond issues. I don't think that's the way to do it. I think it's, it, what I'm about to say would get, probably get me fired, but that's okay. But doing it the right way, you probably should have a dedicated tax every year. And be honest with the people. Say, we're going to charge you a mill of taxes extra. It's painful, but that's the only way to solve it. You can do bond issues, which are still being paid after the road has already been ripped up and redone. Or you can attack it the right way and say, but you got to do it. Whatever you do, you got to say, here's how much we collect. Open it up so people can see where the money's going. And have a master plan of which road's got to be fixed. Obviously, the key roads first, and then have a plan going out into the neighborhoods. Well, what happens is, you know, they uh, nobody wants to hear the terms tax. tax but John, it, it, no, well, yeah. well, let me, but yeah. they'll, they'll backdoor tax you instead, and then it won't. The headline won't read tax increase one mil. They'll they'll, they'll they'll it'll be a service fee on uh, something else, or if they did do it that way. But just as long as it's earmarked. But there's only one way that. government can pay for anything, and it's you know that's the unfortunate thing. Yeah. It's how we spend the money. All right. Go ahead, caller. Hi, Ken. Hey, and the answer to that 
uh, fee for the uh, five and ten dollars. I was just reflecting my wa uh, my wife when she filled out our registration. It was an additional ten dollars for the two years for the, uh, the county. Oh, they got you then. Yeah, they, they did. Okay. My friend, our earlier caller, got uh, only five. Buy one, get one free. Yeah. I had my, my wife figure it out, and no, it was extra ten dollars in that extra fee, in that fee for two years. Um, on Presque Isle, they're going to be putting speed bumps going down to the and probably put them around the park. So I know it's a park, but what registrate what regulations do you have to? abide by if you were to put something on the Bayfront Highway. Remember, we were always talking about how fast the speed seemed to be. And speed bumps is one way to control that without having to use extra police officers all the time. Well, the state would have to do that, like they did in front of Sarah's restaurant. One thing about John, John's uh, favorite yeah. thing, roundabouts. Is, uh, we're going to be there like and down below. Too, they said. Actually, it's off the top of the hill, they said, with the speed bumps. I love roundabouts. Where's that? <laughs> Huh? Where the press car, they're going to put their speed bumps in now again. They, they don't well, have they put them right by be. Sarah's because you got crosswalks there with people uh, trying to get to Sarah's and trying to go to the apartments. You got people crossing at the zoo. The speed is way too much. When you, if you sit down at Sarah's in the old days, it was just too fast. Don't put. Don't they have that um, concert series right down by there too? And a lot of people park. Yeah. Now they don't the have the speed list. bumps on now. My wife goes, "Why?" And I said, "Probably because of the winter." They would rip them up with the plows. Yeah, they that's take them what I was just going to say. Yeah. They take them out for the winter. Yeah, but to put them, what they'd have to do, I, I can tell you that before the state does anything, they'll do a study like on, in the city, they own Route 8 and 38th Street. So before we can do anything, the state has to study it, and then they'll tell us it's okay to do it or something like that. But if they were to put in speed bumps, you have to have adequate warning and you know, you have to decide where they probably could do it. It's probably a little, like in Liberty Park, where there's a definite pedestrian. Well, that's what I'm saying. On Bayfront Highway, like yeah. John's mentioned there, going over to Liberty Park, but also uh, around 12th and uh, Bayfront there. Uh, remember, trying to make it safe for pedestrians to cross the highway there. Right now, you can't do it. Actually, it would work better some speed cameras. Yes, I'm, I don't mind them. Some states do that. Well, Oh, no, you, you get enough tickets, you'll it'll, it'll get to you. You could never put, you know, during the main track. I the other day I rode over the Bayfront Highway, and it, I'm thinking, well, this is going to be the quicker way, just like everybody else. But did. it's not. Oh, it was terrible. It was I, all I, timing. Really. If you do it the right time, it's okay. I, honestly, I don't. I, when it bottles neck, it bottlenecks when you're going from east to west. You come off of, you know, if you come down the Bayfront Highway. And then right when you get to, it's all good until you get to State Street. And then once, you know, because you got the one lane yeah. going each way. And it's it's a, it's a disaster. And if you were to put speed bumps to slow everybody down, ooh, that would be not good. But uh, the, during the high traffic times, it's really bad. And slowing people down is already slower than what they're going. You, you can't speed when it, during, during rush. No, you can't. No, just that in the middle, it was sometimes like if you're at the right time late at night. Yeah. It's like a speedway. Well, there's a lot of accidents. Right? I mean, that's a, clearly a, a death intersection. That's the, the hey, thanks for calling, Doc. Thanks, Doc. Another thing, dear Ted. Oh. I'm just you know I'm listening to uh, Waterford. The uh, uh, store owners are wanting Waterford to reverse the uh, angle parking instead of backing in. They want to pull back, pull in. That they've been getting a lot of complaints about uh, people when they back in. They hit the adjacent car. In, you know, this is why I like I like to I like pulling in straight. Well, that's just it. I mean, it, has anyone ever uh, checked how our you know around Perry Square where you got the backing in prop uh, procedure? How much uh, complaints or damages have been occurring on those uh, areas? As I used to watch out of my window. I didn't see that much, but I, what, what, it seemed like there was a delay. Though some people just can't back up right. <laughs> If it was such a good idea, why does every mall and plaza have you pull in front ways? Um, I, that's something I, thought, I don't know if it's been done as any uh, 
And, and the other reason why they like it in Pennsylvania is because your plates are on the backside. You know, if you had if you had ramps and everything where you pulled in, we had a guy that used to do that to parking ramp. He uh, he backed his car in so he couldn't get his license plate. But we, we, we but you remember you remember that's what that's happened, weird. don't you, Doc? Hey, Doc, you remember what happened? The skinny kid that got underneath there and took the mirror and read the license plate. I, I did. Today. He knows what I'm talking about. I drove a complete read it and right out the warning. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for calling, Doc. One thing before, you yeah. know, Carl was here last time. We wanted to talk about. Uh, yeah, I wanted to get him to talk a little bit. We, the, uh, we have election machine situations going on. The voting machine that's been on the news. Oh, jeez. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll ask the caller. Towards the end of the show, we'll cut It is the end of the show. Oh, we got time yet. Go ahead. I'll wait. Thank you. Um, I, with, uh, you know, they want new voting machines. I mean, Carl, I mean, you would know more about that. I mean, we, would you touch on that? I, that's kind of important for, I think, people to know and understand what's going on with that. Well, th- this is something that's very important to all of Erie County uh, residents. And, uh, you know, we, we continue to have these mandates being brought down from the, the federal government and the state government, uh, controlled by uh, the, the Republican uh, uh, legislature. And uh, they're, they're moving away from human service issues and they're putting, they continue to put these mandates in place, but they're, they're now pushing them down with the, the funding responsibility on local communities. And this is happening more and more. The county, the city, uh, and the, the big issue that, that's going to bring this to the forefront is, uh, the, the voting machines. We, we've been mandated by the state, uh, to have new election equipment in place. For, first, they started off with the mandate saying, that once you bought new election equipment, uh, then, then this mandate came into play. Now they're giving us a time frame that they want every county to have new election equipment by December of 2019. And, uh, and there's no funding or, or very little funding. And the ones we have now are not the ones that are Well, you have to buy new election equipment. They have to be certified uh, from through the state. Um, we, we have to follow the state election code through the, through the election department. And they are the ones that certify every election machine that is eligible to be used throughout the state. Right now, there's only one machine that's certified. Now, by the time the process is over, there'll probably be three or four. Uh, so then we have to pick from, from one of those three or four. Uh, but everybody across the state has to use one of those certified machines. And the, the federal government, uh, through the HAVA money that's left over, Pennsylvania will roughly get about $17 million, divided among 67 counties. Uh, Senator Casey has just put forth a bill asking for an additional $13 million for Pennsylvania, spread through 67 counties. Erie County will get less than $2 million. And which is going to cost? So we estimate uh, that it's going to cost between 8 and $12 million to have new voting machines. And so... We're, we're going to be at a deficit of anywhere between six to ten million dollars uh, in a very short time to, to figure it out. And so uh, we, we're uh, at the county level talking about putting together a task force. We've had meetings with, with different people. We're trying to be proactive about this. Uh, and we're trying to push back a little bit with, with the state to say you, you can't continue to force unfunded mandates on the local communities uh, just expecting that the local city council or the local county council is going to raise taxes and that that's going to get your responsibility away from it. Um, so, uh, you know, it's it's going to become a bigger and bigger issue. I mean, this is a hot-button topic. Well, I know that, uh, you know, there was a newspaper article where you and some of the other people stepped forward and, you know, um, I think somebody said, was you and the city council too, or somebody, I don't know. But, Bob, Bob Mursky from City Council. Okay. Was, I think it was somebody from City Council. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, I'm glad that you guys stepped forward because they need to realize, and you know, I think it's a, it's a more of a political thing too with the state elections coming up for governor. I think they're playing, it's an important role into what mandated and, uh, unfunded mandates and these, uh, Republicans and even Democrats. I mean, we, they start playing games and who's got to pay the price. The tax Jeez, we don't have that kind of money. No. Go ahead, caller. 
Yeah, how you doing? Hey, a comment on the voting. Why don't they vote with the machine and also a paper ballot? That way, if there's a problem with the machines, you always have the paper backup. I think so that. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah that, that's what that's what brought this whole issue to the forefront is uh, to add on a machine that has a paper ballot backup. So the the new voting booths that we have to get uh, are roughly about eight thousand oh, okay. dollars. And then the machine. But what I'm talking about is that I can remember voting on a paper ballot. You going in and you checked off your whoever you were voting for on a paper ballot before the voting machines. But uh, okay, and then another thing I wanted to make a comment on that Bayfront Highway. That Bayfront Highway was built in the '90s with traffic studies from the '60s. Yeah, you're so right. It was never going to handle the traffic it was meant to handle. And then also uh, on the street paving, back when Savakia was mayor, she had a dedicated $2 million a year just for street paving. Where did that funding come from and where did it go? Uh, I, I couldn't tell you because I wasn't here then, but my guess would be that in the budget she probably put $2 million. And uh, we could do that too. I mean, it, basically it's the same thing I'm saying. Uh, rather than float a bond issue, you put it in the general budget so that if taxes are raised, okay, you're going to get complaints no matter what you do in life. But, like, in her case, if she told you she was spending $2 million, it's kind of what I'm saying you should do now, which is saying decide on a figure and dedicate the millage. Say, we can do that. We can say uh, we can dedicate so much millage to come up to $2 million or $3 million, whatever we want, or $1 million, whatever we, whatever council and the mayor decide. As long as, long as it stays dedicated to that. Right. And remember, we're it, still paying for the Jonestown flood. You're right. And that $2 million, here's an example. If she spent that money, and I was still controller, let's say, huh? when, when the bill came in, that would be taken out of that account. Yeah. So it's easy to say, well, okay, there's the paving. It was taken out of that account. It was done properly. We don't transfer any money out of there for other things. But I think going forward, I, I think you got to be honest with the public and say, look, whether you float a bond issue, and Carl knows this, if you float a bond issue in the general budget, you got an obligation for principal and interest. Okay. I, it's a, it's the same thing, you know. Years, there was $2 million a year dedicated. And yeah. I wonder where that came from. Was that a, like a tax I, increase? That well, was supposed to be dedicated. I think it just was in the general budget, and if the if the tax it, taxes went up, it, then it went up as a result of that being in there. Yeah, like you said, I can't remember where that come from. You know, she might have even floated a bond herself that give her two million dollars a year for the twelve years or however long she was in there. I, mean, I like I said, I can't remember where it came yeah. from. I'd have to go back and look. She spent two million dollars a year the entire time she was mayor. And she also was the mayor that got every dirt road out of the city of Erie, put in curbs, sidewalks, and paved roads. Uh, uh, she did get the in my street. She got it paved, but we didn't get the uh, we didn't get the curbs or the sidewalks. But on the east side, all the dark tar and chip roads yeah. did get resurfaced. And that was a a lot of that that she did was was through a bond issue. Okay, because she she yeah, did. I just couldn't remember where that funding came from and what happened. You know, because I, I couldn't remember if that was a dedicated tax, and if it was a dedicated tax, it should still be there. Well, she might add some in the budget and some. I'd have to go back and – up in the controller's office, we used to have all the budgets from all the years. So you could go up there and take a look and see, you know, where it came from. All the road money comes out of the liquid fuels, right? Or is that No. Well, actually, our liquid fuels, we use more for lighting. Uh, you're permissible to, to buy – Equipment, streets, or anything to do with street repair. So we choose lighting, which is okay. It, it's a horse apiece whether you want to. So they, over the years, they have always used the liquid fuels mainly for the street lighting bill we get. How about we go to solar lighting and, and so, so lighting liquid works. fuels isn't the only source of funding for roads in Pennsylvania then? Yeah, if that was the only source, we'd be in trouble because it's not that big. Yeah. Carl can tell you that it goes down every year or because we get it from the county. It goes, I think it goes from us, oh, from the state to the county, and then the county tries to allocate it by... Well, more unfunded mandates, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean... I, w I wanted to get back to what the, the caller had mentioned about the voting machines. Uh, 
The, the voting, the, the new voting machine. We just recently looked at one that's that's uh, being certified with the state, and it, it's actually a paper ballot that you would fill out. Oh, really? And then you put it in the machine. Oh, and then you to, put it in. Okay, right. that's you put, good. Put it in to have it read. Machine. Right, and then and then it essentially when you put it in, uh, you know, it's like putting your quarter into the uh, oh, really? into the parking machine. You put it in, and it goes into a secure box. Okay, to register like that a good vote. Idea. So yeah. it's not the boxes like in Florida where they end up in the back of a car and they're yeah, not, traveling not to Ocala the Chad, County or something. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how much of a how much of a funding gap is there between what the states offered and what we have to pay? Well, it depends on on again uh, what the final number of of the the certified the, you know the different certified machines and companies. Uh, but as I started to say, the machine itself, ones that we've looked at are 8,000, and the, the additional uh, device that's added to it to, to make a, a paper ballot or a paper trail is about $2,000 more. So they're about $10,000 per machine. We have 750 machines in And that won't change, right? So that, that's, that's not going to change. So that's yeah. $7.5 million right there. And then you have to buy the, the software, uh, the licensing, the, the – you know, you get a maintenance plan for the 15 or 20 year uh, life of the machines, et cetera, et cetera. So that that's where we get to the eight to 12 million. Wow. And, well, what uh, about so, what so we're we're six to ten million dollars short. What about joint purchasing with like Crawford County and these uh, other? Have you guys, you guys go. Thanks. Hey, thank, thank you for calling, sir. What about joint purchasing? Yes, well, I mean, so the voting and certainly with all 67 counties dealing with the voting equipment in one year. Of course, we're we're on top of that with the, what what they call the CoStars uh, network, and uh, what they're anticipating is that these voting machine vendors uh, will be within the CoStars system, and so there'll be a negotiated price. Uh, that negotiated price is still being negotiated. It's still being negotiated, but but it's still around the the eight. The CoStars $1. helps us a lot in a lot of yeah. programs. That's how we buy a lot of our cars and et cetera, you know. You know, and then, uh, you know, all because – is this because of the Russian Trump thing or is this just because – Yeah, I mean, that's that's a large uh, impetus for this. But we, we have not had any problems in Erie County, I should state that. Uh, there, there's nobody that's claimed fraud in the elections. There's no nobody that's uh, that's been able to uh, – you know, get into our systems. I mean, we, we've been fortunate with the system that we have. The system's worked. Now, we, our lifespan is about three to five years left on our system, and we would have then had to purchase a new system anyway. Uh, but our, un, unfortunately, our timeline has been kind of taken out of our control and, and moved up substantially to, to an 18-month window. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's just sad that, you know, the unfunded mandates, and like I said, it's well, that's what when I was on the school board. That's what killed us. It's I mean, time to play politics. Program after program. Yeah, I when I was, when I first got it, I was dumb. I got to admit this. I come on school board, and and I heard the term uh, mandate, and they said, "Well, it's a uh, we're gonna the state's gonna fund this mandate." So I'm thinking, well, funded a mandate means if if it comes in a million dollars, they give you a million. They go, no. Under the Constitution, they consider full funding 50 percent. Right. But in reality, John, you get 35 percent or some. Exactly. So you start whacking your head, going, right. what, "What? What kind of game are we playing?" You know. And they keep passing that down. People say, "Well, why do you got this program?" Because it came from out east, and you got the same problem more than we do because you guys are in the service end of it. We don't get the mandates as much, you know, down in the city level. Right. The school district does, yeah. but it is wacko. Yeah, I you got anything you want to offer there, Councilman? We well, still get to I, you know, I just it's it's a pleasure to be here uh, again. As we said in the beginning of the the program, um, there, there's a new uh, a new feeling of cooperation going on between the city and the county, and uh, I think the channels of communication are open. We might not always agree. But at least we're going to sit down and and talk about the issues for the benefit of the one thing I could never Erie get. Erie County. The one thing I could never get was like our president and your your president should should get together. You know, 
separate from the executive bodies. Because, you know, we're the ones that make the laws and we should get together. If you get to know each other, a lot of that stuff like happened with the bus company shouldn't happen. I mean, you know, we got a lot and of... And that shouldn't have happened, okay? No, we got a lot of good stuff going on. We have, you know, uh, city and county working together on... Well, we know, have to, you know... Land banks. We have this downtown corporation to investing money. We have the uh, Innovative District trying to bring in tech into this area, trying to, you know, bring Erie. Erie seems to be 20 years behind the times, it seems like. Everybody. But it, you, you go to, it's you know... Time. I, can, I think we're all working together to bring the city itself. You know, and the county just opened a new website, I saw. Um, I was on the news. I, I don't know if we, they introduced that to council yet. Well, they unveiled it to council. It's It's not... Complete to go to the public yet. What's that? The economic development or something like that? Choose Erie. Choose Erie. Yeah. You know, when you look at, I mean, here's where. Choose Greater Erie may end up being the final time. Here's where we're really bad, too. I mean, you go to Allentown. better be. You go to Allentown, Bethlehem, and the two counties, okay? Yeah. And they get together. They got a joint airport. They, look, they're both looking to better each other, but in the end, if it's good for the area, they work together a lot. We, we have to even start working with Crawford County. And Warren in those counties because this is Northwest PA and if we can make it better, when, when that smart Erie, I was going to tell you that, I went to that thing the other day, uh, the smart Erie thing they called it, smart city rather. Mm-hmm. Potentially, it has an, it could have an effect all over the whole county. And if we do it right, it could transform some industry here, it could transform yeah, you, you know, we have keeping to, kids here in a long term. You know, we have to start developing technology. You know, like we talked about on the last show, our generation, we're, 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 we're starting, you know, like mm-hmm. I said, from mine up, very limited. From me down, it's mandatory. Well, yeah, I mean, the kids are, hey, the, the things we were talking about at that meeting are things that a lot of people that call our show are scared about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, but little things like how we, how we collect parking with apps now, yeah. how we're going to, you know, you, you can control yeah. your whole lighting. They claim if they do this project right, they can save us tons of money on our lighting bill. And you look at you look at all the things that they can do. Uh, you know, we're talking about uh, controlling roads, traffic flow, mm-hmm. uh, and this is. And then it gets into the security sector, which is why they chose Erie was because a we got an international waterfront. We're a small city that. They can adapt to without too much problems. You know, like going to Pittsburgh or Philly, you got huge problems. You got a lot of development. Here, we're kind of redeveloping our city from scratch because we're admitting it's bad now. So everything's new. And if you look at, you got Tom Ridge, the School of Intelligence. You got uh, Barron Campus with their engineering school. You got Mercier's with their, you know, all that stuff. Homeland Security presence here. So, I mean, they... If they use Erie as a rollout, yeah, that's for, you know, yeah, that's a great. I mean, that's the I whole mean, innovative district. But now we got to take, we got to do it, John. We got to say we're willing to invest in our future. Well, you know, I think Mercyhurst is doing their thing. The innovative district are trying to bring high tech, family sustaining jobs. The downtown corporation, they're investing in the future in the city. City council is, is, is introducing a land bank. County council is doing a land bank. City and county are starting to work together. Well, yeah, once That's, we get this, it. We're finally working together. Everybody is trying to get on the same page to move the city forward, which we haven't done. No, and all the plans are out there, and you, and you, you know that. It's time to stick to plans. Well, we have a plan. But, 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 I mean, everybody has their own plan. But what they're doing now for the first time is they're actually getting together and saying, well, how does my plan help or hurt you? You know, because... You know the Erie Insurance, they have what they want to do. You know Hammett's got their plan. Mm -hmm. But they're actually getting together now and saying, well, how do we integrate our plan so that we all get what we want, but we don't hurt the other guy? And then telling the city that, or the county, now the county and city can plan, like, what road networks do you need? You know, everybody has their own fiefdom that they want to secure. But sometimes we all got to start working together. I think they are now, John. I I totally agree. I mean, county and see right here. I mean, how often do we have county council people coming on the show? We can't get nobody. I mean, other no. than Carl. I mean, well, we had one. That offer has been out there a long time, and nobody. Yeah. I mean, people. You know, I don't know why they don't like. They don't like facing questions from guys like John and Doc and these other guys that call in because they they'll have to answer questions. Hey, I, I enjoy the questions, but you know, people should not fear the change either because I think 
for this community to move forward, we, we have to. You're going to have people. We have to forget about yeah. the old factories and that. Yeah. They may or may not come back. They're not coming back. But, but the new thing is like technology. You know, if we can make Erie an incubator for, uh, electronics and stuff like they're doing in other communities. You know, it seems like every community has them, but Erie has a lot of cave citizens. You know, I've talked about. Like what? Cave. Oh, yeah, I agree with you. Citizens F- against fossils, virtually we everything. We call them fossils. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we have to start adapting to the new economy, to the world markets. I mean, the, the, the manufacturing jobs are gone. I mean, the, those that are family, most of them are gone. They're maybe $12 an hour gigs. I mean, there, that's not a family sustaining wage. With GE leaving, that hurts not only the people that worked at GE, but the other businesses that. I am, I am personally for meeting them. with, uh, well, I, I talked to Tom Hagan, yeah, amazing man. You know, I talked to Nick Scott. Uh, the people that are going to make changes here. Tom Kennedy, I talked to I him. Mean, and these guys are develop, are, are putting in their own flow. They're putting their money where their mouth is. And, and, and I plan on meeting with uh, Persinger next and, and seeing well, how that plan integrates. Working with those guys. Together, moving the city forward. You're going to have naysayers on every little single, single thing you guys do. It's going to happen. Look, I remember, what, stick I remember when they forward. tore down all the city when I was in college, and they were going to build all these high rises. And you look out today, and there's nothing there but the same empty lots. You know. I mean, all so the we, high we rises. Go, you know, well, we got to move forward now. We, yeah. You know, I think now we got when you have people actually putting in 25 million. And saying, yeah. "Okay, I'm going, I'm going to put the money in, but we're going to form a committee we got one to decide what you're going to do with it." You we know. got one shot at the apple. We have to keep believing in ourselves. We don't do that, and though. We can do it. We we have in the past. I think the biggest problem with Erie was, and I always said this: if the state was going to give us 20 million for a stadium, and the stadium cost 30 million, we did it for 20 million. We just didn't believe in ourselves, and and at, at some point in time. Whether you read the Buki report or any report, uh, and when they talk about local investment, they're exactly talking about 25 million that was put into a fund of people that are concerned now. Okay? Yes, they have, uh, to say that Erie doesn't have or anybody else doesn't have a vested interest would be wrong, but it's for the good when people see what's going to happen. Every, everybody, every major player in our community is now putting their money where their mo- their uh, money where the mouth is because they want to create an environment. Correct. I mean, so now government and business and uh, the private sector and the community organizations, the community groups. I think I'm seeing a positive trend in well, a different. I, I just drove over 28th Street and I saw an empty field that used to look like a rat hole, and the sisters already got a sign up. Yeah. And he planted a garden. I noticed that when I was one step at a time. Right, yeah. one step at a time. Now Carl was digging ditch, or digging ditches for a garden on Eleventh uh, and Wallace. Eleventh and Wallace. Yeah, he had a shovel in his. He, he, I think he even had like blisters see, on his. See, right. one one step at a time, <laughs> right? <laughs> one you, shovel at one a shovel time. at a time. But the community is starting to rally around each other, and you know, there's always going to be drama here and there. But we got to just stay focused. Because honestly, it's not, it's gonna be for the next generation. It's gonna be for our kids and our grandkids that we improve the city and want people to stay here. Once again, we've lost population. I'll, I'll leave you with the old saying. <coughs> Success has many fathers, failures but an orphan. And as soon as people see things happening, yeah. you know, everybody wants to be on the bandwagon. They do. Right. Same thing like if you're, I know I'll get my Steeler fans nuts, but It's the same thing in sports. Everybody likes to be on the winning team. Once they see things changing, you watch the money come out of the woodwork. And that's part of of the plan. I mean, that's part of the uh, the city refocus plan. But, Kaz, we're out of time. Kaz, Carl. I want to thank you. Carl, uh, you sure you want to say before you leave? Well, it's just a real pleasure to be here with you guys today once again and uh, appreciate uh, having the opportunity to fill you in on some of the things that are happening over in the county. I, I and, think we'll uh, have to do forward to our continued conversations. We'll have to do in the future when we have you on. You're welcome anytime. Well, thank we'll you. We'll have to give you like the first five minutes or something so we get you. Out. He'll never shut up. Well, that <laughs> yeah, that's okay. He'll take an hour. John will be standing there going, "Why? Give me the role. I give have... me the role. I'll take. I'll, I'll take the role." People do listen because they'll, they'll tell me they were they they love the guests we've had on. You know, good, excellent. 
that that's good because I think I've been the only one of the only guests. <laughs> no, no, I mean the people we've had on in the past. We've had Carl before, and oh, who else have we have? You had uh, Ruth on. Ruth on. And who and else have we had? Uh, we had the guy from the school district were yeah. on here. Those two guys. We, we said you. I've had uh, Johnny Buckner. That's why I said oh, you were here. Twice, I've had Johnny so Buckner on there. Uh, oh, John Book. I, I have a. I have an invitation out to the airport director. I, I've told him. Yeah. Uh, Mike Tan, he's been kind of busy. Yeah, he's he's but, out of here though, isn't he? Mike yeah, Tan. but you know, every once in a while, I like to have those. And uh, I think I've invited uh, Mr. Persinger if he wants to come on. And well, I know I was talking to uh, the, uh, the guys from the. They're moving forward with the uh, the bus uh, expansion, so that's good. that's moving forward. So that's. Yeah, I saw you can see the start of the uh, parking garage. Yeah. So, Mike, whenever you want to hit the music, uh, everybody, thanks for calling, Cass. Thanks for having us. Anytime, John. And Carl, feel free to come anytime. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the Taxpayers Hotline Show on Erie's own Government Access Channel 9.